good afternoon everyone uh, i am arunava and uh, my subject is a uh, quite a vast subject today that um, from my experience you know what i have seen on the field what it really means for an organization okay, to become ai and, and data enabled and uh, product and people um, so let me give a bit of context uh, because whatever uh, i will be talking to you about is uh, what i have seen on the market so part of it is a theoretical uh, most of it it is you know practical and uh, so what we do you know a bit of it first so i am the cto for uh, digitate digitate um, is an organization that makes product for cognitive automation side of it there is some credential in the market and igneo is our flagship product now what igneo does it uh, brings in uh, machine learning you know into operations business operations and try to give value in a very uh, short period of time and um, we have uh, start selling this product around 4 years back and before that for 4 years we made it and last 4 years you know we have seen certain trends in the market i'll talk about that mainly now from my role perspective you know being a cto i need to do certain things you know i talk to the analysts so that give me a trained view i get into customer premises talk to them pre sales and post sales uh, and also i help my product team to develop new products correct so combining all these you know uh, i get to be a part of uh, in this whole cycle of ai machine learning in operations in the trains the incubation the success joys and most importantly failure so whatever i'll be talking about today is uh, from my experience and uh, probably very obvious but sometime uh, stating obvious is very important uh, like telling your loved ones again and again that i love you it helps correct uh, now without further ado yeah so uh, what we are seeing in the market and what i'm talking about is mainly on the operation side of any business that how people are changing and as i told that uh, we are seeing it for last 4 years and when we started uh, with the journey we saw certain trends you know how people reacted to what we are going to talk now what i'm trained i'm seeing there's a significant difference and the organizations are changing very frequently so there are four facets in any organization correct or at a company so there is a operating model so operating models what we are seeing again and again that from a process control it is being very much data driven so data is the core of any machine learning which is core of ai correct a machine understands only data second is the organization intelligence it is based on tacit knowledge it used to be it is uh, you know very much intuition centric tom knows how it works correct but it is changing very frequently to give an example in it operations when there are bad jobs running if it fails people say that you know some person will know that it again fail tomorrow because it happens like that so this intuition centric uh, tacit knowledge centric things are changing frequently people are getting more and more data and it is coming out to be as evidence based this is a very significant shift that we are seeing in organization and it's very important because if this culture change doesn't happen then the technology cannot come in because see the cycle of uh, technology and the culture change are interdependent a technology comes in people see it is possible so the culture changes and when the culture changes the technology evolves again correct there is a business case for the technology to grow the third thing is uh, very important you know this third and fourth i'll be talking a bit more in detail uh, so the nature of work uh, is changing very frequently and very fast for people so from manual work i will not say automated uh, but uh, it is becoming augmented you know people are being more and more comfortable to take help from machine to do type two types of task one is that what is very simple manual which a machine can do very easily a simple automation another thing is the data churning and the analytic side of it where you have to look at a lot of data and take a decision a human can do it but it takes time so in these two areas which are two different spectrums you know a very simple task and a very complex complex task machines are helping people and people are probably filling in the gap and being man in the middle and the fourth which is a bit of ethics issue probably when we talk about ai ml slash robots is uh, the roles and culture inside the organization and i have seen it first hand you know how people used to react four years back and now 
Um, from activity based, it is becoming outcome based. It's not really how many hours or what exact activities you are going to do, but exactly what you are delivering at the end of the day. This mind shift is very important uh, because at the end of the day, if it is outcome oriented, then people will be more open to take help from a machine, use machine learning, artificial intelligence. Uh, because otherwise, you know, there is a conflict of interest. So these are the four things we are seeing. I will be talking about two specific things uh, because these are the two things which we have seen very up close and personal that what it really means. So the first is the manual to augmented. Um, so manual is obviously doing any work uh, you know, manually completely by hand. And then it went to assisted, a small pieces of task a machine will be doing. Suppose you click on a button, it goes and does something. Slowly it is changing, the RPA came into picture, robotic process automation, which supports a series of tasks, but which doesn't change very frequently. We saw this wave around four or five years back, started with the BPO industry and you know, getting into other business processes. And where we are now and where the product uh, that we manufacture and uh, you know, market is into that category, that it's adaptive. It perform intelligent context aware uh, you know, automation orchestration. What I mean by that, I'll be touching about the product also a bit. I'll try to explain. So this thing is happening and, you know, happening very, very fast. The second part is uh, on the apprehension side that when this technology comes in, what is changing in people's role? Uh, people have a typical tendency say that, okay, if any automation comes in, whether my job will go away, that's a big fear and that is the biggest roadblock probably, the culture change. Now, like any other automation throughout the history, it is repeating here, correct? What we are seeing that in initial days, when through machine learning, artificial intelligence, through automation, etc., some roles are going away. So if anyone is conversant with uh, IT operations, they will know there are concepts of L1, L2, L3 engineers. L1 does the catch and dispatch, L2 does the first level of analysis, L3 does the very finer analysis. What we are seeing, this L1 and L2, which is a very repetitive task, is actually going away. And slowly, slowly, L3 are the only thing which are remaining. Tower architects, it's very standard that there are very specific SMEs in a specific technology. He will do only that technology. He used to call it technology tower SMEs. That is slowly becoming, you know, very blurred. What's happening is that initially the traditional roles are coming down. But once this void is created, new roles are coming in. We are seeing the new roles chief data officer, chief automation architect, full stack engineers. See, all these things are possible because there is a need for the data, there is a need for automation, it is being accepted by people and there are enablers in the market to support that. So for example, full stack engineer, what it really means, a person who used to look only after operating system now is looking after database also. It is possible because there is a machine somewhere who does the first level of analysis, give more information, then the people apply this intelligence to go and get this work done. So it is actually becoming more and more reality today. Okay. Now, here is where, you know, uh, the experience or what I have seen in the market comes in and I will be talking about it in a bit. Now, see, from artificial intelligence, uh, perspective, though we tell AI and ML in the same breadth, they are very different things, correct? AI is a combination of 50, 60, 70 technologies. It's not a technology in itself. You combine multiple technologies and try to mimic intelligence. Now, though it sounds, sounds like science fiction, but if you take out the components, you will feel that it is already in our lives very much, correct? What are the components? Virtual assistants, chatbots, drones, intelligent automation, uh, you know, self-driving cars. These are the things we are seeing around, correct? So if you combine any multiple of these technologies, it eventually becomes AI. Some of the things are yet to come, you know, artificial general intelligence probably 15 to 20 years away from us, where it can uh, mimic empathy, common sense, etc. But we are some, you know, miles away from that. Now, what we are seeing that when we went uh, to put a technology, you know, in a marketplace and in a client place, four years back. So it's very new to them. 
and uh, any new technology, if someone has to put his neck on to do a project with half a million dollars, then obviously there are many apprehensions that comes in. What we saw that worked is a very solid business case. Upfront, if we can build a business case, you know, in our area it will be three areas specifically, agility, efficiency, and resilience. Basically, solving things faster, doing it at lower cost, etc. Whenever we could build a business case and give it to our customers, which they could take to their boss and ask for half million dollars, it actually sailed through. Really? Wherever we could not do it, 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 it took us ages, you know, to get in. So building a business case for any new technology, in this case AI, is of paramount importance. That is what we have learned, and probably we have learned in a very hard way. Second thing is time to value. See, any new technology, you know, people are very reluctant to spend too much time to see the value. It is probably okay for scientists, for you know, students, for product companies. But for business operations, if they don't see a value within two to three quarters, it is very much possible that it is going to die a very slow and painful death in project. So we have learned a very hard way that if we can show some value within first six months time, and people start getting confidence inside that product or the service, then it is much easier to go ahead. People will come and talk more and more about this. Give you an example. There's a very large postal company um, in Nordics. So the first product we put in was um, for IT operations. So when they saw that the IT operations actually works and giving them value, now they are telling that for their business operations, which is sorting center, whether we can increase the efficiency in their sorting center, which is not really the product capability, but it can extend. So the, the, the confidence in the product and the technology itself, when they saw the first value and time to very fast, you know, they came to us and said that whether you can do more with us. Third is transformation ownership. See, we have around 115 customers, global customers, quite large. I will say 70% of the places, you know, it worked well. And probably 30% it did not work well. Actually, it did not work at all. So why is the case? It's the same product, you know, why it is not working? So then we realized that for any new technology, any new product which is not out of the mill and not essential, if there is no stewardship from the top, very top, it is impossible to go ahead if the CEO or the CEO of the company doesn't have a transformation ownership and shows that it is very easy, you know, the whole things to fizzle out and die a very natural death. Now, if we build these three things together, business case, fast time to value and transformation ownership, we have seen it works very well. Where we have seen the roadblocks are, you know, and it is, uh, some analysts also talk about the same thing. The first, the fundamental problem is lack of data. The correctness of data and the scatteredness of data. With chief data officer coming into place, probably this will be solved because at the end of the day, at the heart of artificial intelligence is a machine. A machine only understands data and needs to take get data to do anything at all. So if the data is not available, it's impossible to do anything at all. So lack of data in, its, in, in, in analyst service also, it comes out as a top, that lack of data is actually hurting it a bit, you know, the adoption a bit. In recent years, what we have seen, that the security is becoming of paramount importance. Whenever a machine is trying to think on your behalf and going to do something, it's a problem. And specifically with you know, the way the world is getting divided, security, for at least for the last one year, the scrutiny is that we have felt, you know, felt in, in front of our customers that what this product does, what is the security measures, etc., sure, has been of paramount importance. So it is very important Should for anyone who is trying to put a product in AI ML area, I think that question will come to them also. It is nothing different, correct? It is trying to do something which is not man supervised, you know? So people would like to be sure about that, about security. Cultural change and apprehensions. Uh, see, let me give you an example. See, as I told you, it's a time scale, correct? Four years is a long time. Around four years back, we went to a very large bank in UK. And uh, when we talked about the product, we said it can self-heal systems. The moment the word self-heal came in, you know, there was, you know, so much fear in the room and people said, we just don't like it. Three years down the line, last year, the product has been sold and the product has been deployed there. So the point is that from 2015, between 2018, the thought of machines doing something, thinking on your behalf and taking action on your behalf, is actually becoming commonplace slowly and slowly, and it is going to 
improve more. To give you an example, if you say a very leading analyst uh, survey, in 2018, only 4% of CIOs had any AI-enabled project in their goals coming ahead. This year, I saw some other analyst report that if you take the top 10 searches, all three types of searches, new searches, emerging searches, and top searches, everywhere AI ML is the prominent you know, occupier of one of the places. So things are changing very fast, and between 2018 and 19, you know, this is, uh, has been a significant difference. Now comes the last part, which is trust. That whether you trust a machine, whether you trust the intelligence of a machine. Uh, so what we have seen, see, the one problem with AI machines are that it really doesn't tell you, it's very black box, correct? Why a cat is a cat? Why it is telling this is a cat? What we have tried to do is that whatever the product does, we try to give reason, we try to give the log, and we try to give the evidence that what we are trying to say so. Whenever we're doing that, you know, uh, you know, the people's trust inside this whole AI, ML, automation, intelligent automation actually goes up and people are more uh, okay to use it. So uh, that, that is the, you know, the thing that I am seeing in the market. So though my subject was, um, you know, it is product and people that how organization changes, but actually it is much more than product and people. It is product, people, technology, and services, you know, all these four components play very heavily when an organization really wants to become a data-driven and AI-driven. Now, having said that, let me share some uh, uh, experience with you, you know, with our uh, products. So the product we sell and make, it's called Ignio. So it works on cognitive automation and applications and application operations, batch operations and ERP operations, and we are getting into some business cases also, correct. Uh, and it works on uh, three fundamental principles uh, that uh, it is recognition intelligence, that how things are connected with each other, contextual construct of an application or a data center nice or a SAP system or a batch operations. Track. Because if you don't know how things are connected with each other, it is impossible yeah. to take any operations or any activity. Second is on the top of that, you know, we put reasoning intelligence, basically how systems behave at a specific point of time, normal behavior analysis, understanding through machine learning. And depending on the situations happening around you, you decide that what has to be done. So basically, reasoning capability. And the third is, uh, there's a problem in the market today that generally, the reasoning and recognition is done by one product, and it decides that what has to be done. And then the actual work is done by some other product. So in Igneo, what we have tried to do is we have also given the operative intelligence to Igneo. So for example, if it needs and figures out that a database is a problem, for example, through the recognition and reasoning. It has the capability to go and fix that database also and make it up. So that is in nutshell, you know, that what the product is all about. Now, uh, see, whatever I talked about, uh, that uh, what I am seeing as a behavior, as a trend in the market, now what are the people seeing as value in bringing AIML? And whatever I am talking about is in the context of the product uh, that we have uh, deployed at different places. So, and how they have become data driven. So I'll take an example of a very large building society in UK. So what we have done there is uh, Igneo for batch operations or batch analytics is there. So previously, one example I took, correct? If there is a problem in batch operations, you know, on a Monday typically, someone knows, Tom knows that it happens on Monday. But now what they have done, all their 56,000 batch jobs, they have taken into Igneo and it churns the past performance and tells for the next day that what is the expected problem in the next day. So this is a very practical example of how this organization is actually becoming data driven, correct? It is taking data of the bad job, it's a very small example. And based on that, a machine is telling in a much more sophisticated way that tomorrow what is the possibility of things happening? And that is how they become data driven. And, and the benefits that we are seeing are in different areas. For a very large energy major, you know, through automation you know, and machine learning, what happened that their uh, end user Customer satisfaction has first time gone beyond 90% because things get done much faster. Uh, I talked about efficiency, right? business case. In one of the media organization, we saw that there are 25,000 hours of effort was being automated by machine and because of that, that severe crunch in bandwidth of their good engineers, correct? They could do you know, something else much better, which is fit to their intelligence. So there are numerous examples. What we are seeing that these organizations, when there is transformation ownership, there is a business case, we are seeing real value. 
And when in the marketplace people say that what AI is going to do last four years, we have seen the value you know, in, in, on ground and it is actually giving us good results and giving our customers good results. So with that, I have only one more slide to cover. You know, this. <clears throat> now, uh, the industry in data has become so powerful because the industries are changing in themselves, correct? So for example, I heard about Boeing. Boeing is also starting an analytics service. It's a flight manufacturer, correct? Mm -hmm. But it's doing analytics. You know, many of the organizations have a lot of data. So it's a very specific, very large postal company, postal delivery company. Um, so they were thinking in the line that, see, we have a very huge amount of data. If I can analyze that properly, I have a very specific business case business model. So for example, if someone puts a parcel in the parcel counter, it takes two days to reach. And within these two days, no one can actually change it very easily. It's very difficult to change the destination or time of delivery. That happens because so far the analytics that is happening is generally data is still and coarse. So in this range, the gray box is what people do in analytics, you know, and optimize. But think about it. If you can get data which is very live and very fine grained, the specific example I took about, if they can get the location of the truck and the parcel at real time and they can analyze it properly, they can actually tell their customers now, anywhere before 2.30 p.m. on the day of delivery, you can change your delivery instructions, and for every delivery instructions, there's a two euro charge. Okay. It's a completely new business model altogether. So the amount of data that people are having, it's a wealth, and people are realizing that, and this journey has already started, and the distinctions between different industry segments are, you know, started becoming blurred. One you example really is the postal company. They are getting into yeah. a new business model altogether with the data they have. So this is what um, I had to cover. Okay, so how am I doing on time? Time. I think it's exactly on time. You're Fine. Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, any specific questions, etc.?